this is yet another talk about visual question answering. Um, and what we're specifically going to be looking at is uh, a model for answering questions by building neural networks on the fly um, based on the syntactic structure of the question. Um, so just once again, here's the task. We have a question. We have an image. We want to map to an answer. Um, and so we're going to be looking at uh, experiments on natural images today. Um, but for pedagogical reasons, in this talk, we're also going to be looking at examples from a little data, data set um, of abstract scenes involving sort of colored shapes that look like this. So at a very high level, uh, our, module, our model is going to work in the following way. When we see a new question, like is there a red shape above a circle here, we're going to take a syntactic analysis of that question and we're going to use it to build up a question-specific neural network on the fly from a collection of little network fragments that we call modules. We're then going to take that network that we've dynamically constructed and we're going to apply it to our input image in order to produce an answer to the question. Um, as you'd expect, this approach is closely related to a lot of recent work that's gone on, uh, both in structured neural models for vision and on the more natural language side, uh, semantic parsing work. Um, it differs from the structured neural stuff in that we are, well, specifically in that we're building up question-specific neural networks that then get applied to some kind of outside world representation, um, and differs from classical semantic parsing work in that this question-specific computation that we construct uh, is represented as a neural net. So before we go into the details of the model, I want to start by talking at a high level about the kinds of things we expect a visual question answering model uh, to be able to do. One thing that it needs to be able to do, for example, is to know what the word red means. Well, what does red mean? Um, one way of, of thinking about picking this out is to say, uh, I know what red means if I can point to all of the red things that are in the world. And as we've drawn it here, this is just the visual attention mechanism that has been talked about in previous talks today, that's been getting a lot of use in these kinds of vision and language models in recent years. Um, so in this way, we can think of red maybe as being some function uh, from our image or from our representation of the world onto an attention to the red parts of it. Uh, and we can do more complicated things as well. If I have a word like above, I can maybe think of that as of something that's going to transform an attention to circles uh, to the things that are above circles in the world. And more generally, um, if I have a big complicated question like, is there a red shape above a circle here? I can think of this question as being associated with some kind of computation graph that's going to lay out explicitly all of the reasoning steps that I'm going to have to perform to answer this question. Um, and in particular, I have a bunch of little modules for computing the elementary pieces of this reasoning process, and these little modules communicate with each other in terms of attentions. So I think the high-level intuition here is actually quite similar to the previous talk, uh, where we want to be able to do question-specific computations, uh, but here, instead of having the parameters of that computation change, it's actually the structure of the underlying process itself. Um, and more generally, kind of what do we have here? We have a function from images through a bunch of intermediate vector values that we can interpret as attentions to some kind of distribution over answers, which is also a vector. Function from vectors through vectors to vectors is just a neural net, right? Uh, so once we've said we're going to have kind of question-specific computations, what we're really saying is we're going to have question-specific neural networks, and we're going to have to build those neural nets out of pieces in some way. Um, so the structure of the rest of this talk is as follows. We're going to first talk about what those little network fragments are and how they're put together. And next we're going to talk about how to sort of get fully assembled structures and use those to jointly learn behavior for all of these modules at the same time. Um, but let's start with the modules themselves. Uh, there isn't time today to talk about all of the details of the implementations of these things. Those details are in the paper and on the poster. Um, but I want to zoom in on a couple of them just to give you a sort of flavor for how these things work. Um, so one kind of module is this one that we were looking at before that we call a fine module that produces a kind of initial attention to the world. Um, and, and that's going to work as follows. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. As a kind of reminder of what the stakes are here, this is something that's going to be able to work on natural images as well. Um, so how are we going to do this? Well, it's basically the standard attention mechanism. So we're going to start by coming up with some kind of convolutional feature representation of a whole region of our input image. We're going to take that feature representation and we're going to concatenate it together uh, with a module-specific parameter vector that's associated with some word uh, that came from the input question. So we have our feature vector on one side, we have our parameter vector on the other side. We concatenate them together and we just pass it through a multi-layer perceptron with a single output unit, uh, where this output unit is basically going to correspond to the strength of the attention in the region that we're looking at uh, right now. And then we just sweep this operation over all of the, the different positions in the image, something that looks like this. And, you know, in general, we want this uh, scalar score that we get out the top to be uh, large in regions that have red things and small in regions that don't have anything in them or that have things that are not red. 
So that's what we might call the fine module, and that's going to basically produce attentions at the leaves of the tree. Uh, one other kind of thing that we need to be able to do eventually uh, is to get from the space of attentions back into the space of labels. Uh, and this is something that we call a describe module. So that's going to you know, say when we're looking at a bunch of shapes and we ask what color they are, that's going to be able to say they're red. Uh, and once again, this is going to have to work in images as well and produce kind of rich descriptions of things that appear in the image. This works uh, actually in much the same way as the fine module we were looking at before. Uh, we're going to start by taking this input attention that's being passed up from lower in the tree, and we're going to use it to compute a weighted average over all of the different kind of region-specific feature vectors that we have in our image, and that's going to give us a, a sort of pooled feature vector corresponding to the attention. And once again, we're going to concatenate that together with a module-specific parameter vector that's going to determine the specific behavior that we get out, and we're going to pass that thing through a multi-layer perceptron where here, our last layer corresponds uh, either to a distribution over answers directly or some kind of representation of an answer, um, like so. Um, again, if you're interested, there are a couple, of more, a couple more modules that we use, for example, for transforming attentions between each other or measuring the total strength of the attention and the details about those things uh, are in our paper. So the last question we have to answer is how we actually train this kind of thing. And before we can start to answer that question, we have to talk about where these uh, network structures that we're building up on the fly come from. Um, and the good news is that the, the second of those things, where these network structures come from, uh, is actually something that uh, we have really good off-the-shelf tools for from the natural language processing community. So there are things out there that you can download that will take a dependency parse, a representation of the syntax of the sentence, and give you something that basically looks like uh, the network structure that you would want to write down if you were to stare at these things by hand. So we're basically going to assume that this is a solved problem. We actually have some follow-up work where we're learning uh, that structure chooser jointly with the rest of this process. Um, but for now, let's just assume these structures are fixed and given to us by some kind of natural language parser. And what we're left with is a learning problem that looks like this. We have our question, we have our image, we have our question-specific uh, neural network structure built up from a bunch of modules, and then we have the answer. And what's nice is that we can kind of think about this as a bunch of isolated supervised learning problems, where for each example in my training set, uh, I have a single neural network, I have a single input, and a single output, and all I want to do is for that neural network uh, to maximize the probability that it produces the right output given the input image. And the only thing that's going to impose any structure on this training objective is the fact that we might have multiple instances of the same module uh, occurring in multiple different network structures, and in this case their parameters are going to be tied together. So it looks relatively simple as we've drawn it on this slide. What you actually see at training time is something that looks more like this. You have a pretty complicated uh, structured parameter tying scheme where the structure of that parameter tying is given to you by the form of the natural language questions themselves. Um, uh, what's nice, and, and so you know, this is something that you have to set up by looking at the parses. Uh, but once you've done this, once you've persuaded the deep learning framework of your choice to set up this kind of parameter tying scheme, the actual learning problem is super easy, right? We're just telling each network to kind of locally maximize the probability that it gets the right answer out at the end, and you just press go on your optimizer um, and, and run till convergence. One thing that I think is really important to notice uh, about this training setup that we have here. Um, is that the specialization of modules to individual behaviors uh, comes about in a weakly supervised way. There was no point in this entire process at which we actually sort of specified that the, the square module has to find squares or that the right of module has to do this moving right transformation. And in fact, if you didn't have this parameter tying in place, uh, that specialization wouldn't occur and kind of the right behavior would be smeared all across the network. Uh, we're going to see in a minute that you do actually get the kind of specification that it corresponds intuitively to the natural language labels we've assigned those things. Uh, but the specialization comes about entirely because of the structure of this parameter tying scheme, because it's given to us by the language itself. Um, so that's it for the, the model presentation. Uh, and the last thing that we're going to do here is just look at a couple of experiments. Uh, like I said before, we're going to be looking at experiments on both natural images uh, and also on these more kind of abstract scenes involving colored shapes. Uh, for natural images, we're using the VQA, the Visual Question Answering data set that was recently released. Uh, this consists of about 200,000 images, each of which is paired with a bunch of questions and a bunch of answers. Uh, and this is the data set that we've been seeing in the, the previous couple of uh, VQA talks as well. Um, 
So our paper is in kind of the second generation of evaluations that were uh, run on this data set. Uh, here we have some of the other papers that came out around the same time as ours, uh, including the two previous talks as well as a uh, surprisingly effective uh, bag of words model that, that was published at the same time. Um, and the takeaway here is just that if you do the kind of structured approach that we've been talking about today, you're able to get about a half point boost uh, over the previous state of the art here. Um, it's worth pointing out that people have done a lot more work on this task since all of these results were published. Uh, there was a recent paper from our, uh, another group at Berkeley uh, that is uh, several points better than this, uh, but a lot of those improvements are in the kind of low-level visual features uh, and the implementation of the attention mechanism itself, and essentially orthogonal to everything that we're doing today. So we expect that a lot of those gains will stack. Um, we can gain some insight into what's going on with the model by looking at the predictions that it's making. Uh, so here we have an example from the data set. We have the question, what color is she wearing? Uh, and a woman in a white bathrobe. And you can see that the network layout that we've predicted for this question is quite simple. We have a wear module with a color module above it. And we can see that the model has correctly predicted that the answer is white. And we can kind of do the usual trick of looking at this attention that gets passed between the two modules here. And we can see that it's doing kind of intuitively what we would expect uh, when you're looking for evidence of a wearing event. It's looking at the woman's clothes. It's looking at a little region around her head where maybe a hat would be, um, and so on. Here's a slightly more complicated example. The question is, what is in the sheep's ear? And we've predicted a network that involves doing some conjunction and looking at various parts of the sheep. Uh, and just to kind of zoom in so that you can see the thing that's in the sheeps here is a tag. Our model correctly predicts tag, uh, and once again, it's kind of decided to focus on the right region of the image uh, in that final attention that gets passed up to the top module. So that's it for the VQA data set. Um, but one thing that we noticed when we were doing our experiments is that it's actually possible to do quite well on this data set uh, without really doing any kind of uh, complicated reasoning or um, compositional, putting any compositional structure um, uh, in the question answering process. And so we wanted to also build a data set that puts these kinds of reasoning and compositional phenomena at the forefront. So we created a little data set of uh, abstract scenes that look like this, that just involve grids of colored shapes. Um, I want to point people also to a sort of similar uh, synthetic data set from Kate Sienko's group um, that I think had quite similar goals to this. Um, and the interesting th thing here is just that if you take other models, uh, they get quite similar performance to ours on the data set of natural images. Uh, you get much bigger differences in performance on this data set of, of abstract shapes, uh, where kind of the only thing that you can do, or the only way to do well, is by, uh, by really implementing the reasoning and the compositionality process. Um, so even we're not at 100% here, uh, but this is something where, where these uh, uh, models start to get separated. Um, it is our contention that being able to do these kinds of reasoning processes um, uh, is really important for VQA and, and uh, sorry, I'm being told to wrap up. Uh, and so we encourage everyone who runs on this uh, task uh, to use our shapes data set as well and make sure that you can really do this. Um, and uh, yeah, we have more examples. Come to our poster. Um, but to sum up, uh, we've described a, uh, an approach that we call a neural module network uh, that's based on building up network structures specific to the question that we're trying to answer. Thank you.